what would you say to the newest person that's getting involved in the life insurance industry? You know, they're a brand new agent, they just got licensed, or they're thinking about getting licensed here in short order. What would you tell them about how to establish your careers? You've done this now for 47 years. How would you tell them to get their business up off the ground? First of all, congratulations. You have no idea how much of a meaningful transformation you will create for your clients. And if you take this serious and don't listen to the naysayers and um, you begin to learn, empower yourself with knowledge, and then knowledge times experience gives you the wisdom. There's no greater payday, not financially, but when live or die, those people that you're helping to transform themselves financially, to be able to make sure that they cannot outlive their money in retirement. And that if they happen to die prematurely with what we call an untimely death, to be able to deliver a tax-free death claim and say, here, you, your financial house was in order, like I did when my brother passed away. I never mm -hmm. dreamed he would be using the universal life policy I sold him as a death benefit. I thought we were going to ride Harley Davidson's and, <laughs> and, and go river rafting uh, into the twilight of life. Doggone it, he got to graduate before I did. He was just 50 years old. But his sweet wife has been able to live in dignity for 25 years now because of that death benefit. But to the new agents, you will transform people's lives, not just financially, but if you are sincerely interested in your clients and you do what's best for them, it's like Zig Ziglar used to say, you help enough other people get what they want, you're going to get everything in life that you want. And uh, stick to it. I, I loved um, your interview with Tim Tebow uh, last mm -hmm. night because I've had many setbacks in my life. And I've learned most from my negative experiences, but you cannot have a great comeback unless you have a setback. And so don't get discouraged. Uh, if I threw in the towel the first time I had a setback, um, I hate to think what I would be doing instead of transforming people's lives. Don't get discouraged. Hang in there. Gain wisdom and knowledge and go out and change people's lives and you will be compensated financially, but in way more uh, impactful uh, ways than just the money. The reward is unbelievable to help people optimize all of their assets. And, and that's not just the money. Uh, that's helping them to have the confidence to be healthy, to not ever have to worry about the money because now they can go out and be uh, with their family. Uh, they can have health. You, you, many insurance agents never really get their arms around the, the impact that they have on people's lives. So stay with it. Don't get discouraged. Um, you, as you begin to progress, <laughs> um, as you know, Matt, and you're a great example of this, Looking back, um, I do not regret one minute being in this business. It's one of the most prestigious careers I could ever choose. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. What were you studying in college, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> what was I studying in college? I was studying to become an attorney. Yeah. And this was a means to that end. And then most attorneys were like, <clears throat> Uh, if, if, if we had to do it over again, we'd rather go out and do what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> the, my last question, when, when, when you're talking about what I stumbled across this industry selfishly, I was just looking to pay the bills. I could get involved, make a paycheck was versus mortgages or versus this. But I really started getting into the meaning of the business. And that's what led me to your book in 2005, which is Misfortune 101. And I fly out to your office in Salt Lake City. And I realized, I think at that point, I realized this is more than just... Life insurance, you are creating generational wealth. You're creating a legacy. Your, 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 your steps of meaningful transformation process yeah. was, was, was shocking to me. It's also cool to see your sons, your, your, your boys, Aaron, Emran, and Scott, to see uh, us grow because you're, you're, you're actually building up the next generation. You, you talk about not equal distribution. You want equal opportunity. Right. And it's, 
difficult for somebody with kids because they want their kids all to have more than they had. But you talk about equal opportunity. Before I let you go, can you share that one thought? What do you mean by that? Yes, uh, and as you know, I'm very passionate mm -hmm. about this. My goal has always been to make sure that future generations can learn from the mistakes that I've made. And that's why my story is a long learning curve. Um, I want your story to be a fast power curve. Uh, and when I watched my sons and my son-in-law begin to grasp this, and I, I didn't pay them. They didn't fall into, you know, they, they actually worked for nothing for the first couple of years and they learned by osmosis and wow. so forth. I wouldn't pay them, you know, my son <laughs> edited my book and what have you. Okay. But <clears throat> do you want me to be honest or gentle, Matt? Honest. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> when I would meet with people and they were highly successful and uh, I would often ask a question. So how did you go from rags to riches? How did you achieve this empire? And they would begin to tell me their story about how they started out from scratch and so forth, just like I did at Kentucky Fried Chicken making a, a dollar an hour and so forth. And uh, then they were uh, super successful working their entire lifetime. And then oft times they would say, man, I have worked so hard. Um, my kids will never have to work as hard as I did. Well, okay. And so they would come back through the years, and then when they would retire, they would often come in and um, I'd say, how's it going? And they went, Doug, <clears throat> golly, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with my kids. They, they don't even know how to work. <laughs> and I would go, maybe you stole that from them. Ooh. As a parent, oft times we think we're helping our children by giving them everything. So when they said, my kids will never have to work as hard as I did, I'm going, well, wait a minute here. You just talked about that's what made a man out of you. So do you want to take away all of those opportunities, okay? And you start accumulating this money and then pretty soon you die because most, uh, most trusts and wills it's like as soon as you die, chunk, 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 and they divided it up and, and it drops in the kid's lap and some of them get this entitlement mindset. When do I get my share? Mom, dad, will you pay for it? Can I have? And that's called equal distribution. And uh, I'm going to say something here. There's nothing more unequal than the uh, equal distribution to unequals. <laughs> Let me repeat it. There's nothing more unequal than the equal distribution to unequals. So, um, as a Christian, God does not give us equal distribution of blessings, let's say of health, to all of us, regardless of how some of us may choose to abuse our bodies. Our Creator gives us equal opportunities, not equal distribution. So when I began to help people uh, set up their, their trust and their family bank under equal opportunity, then my children, my grandchildren, they have to have some skin in the game. If they'll do this, 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 they save this much. Uh, if, if they contribute, if they come up and have some skin in the game, they sacrifice, they get good grades, uh, then uh, I might match them 50 cents on the dollar or a dollar for a dollar. But it's, it's giving them a hand up instead of a hand out. I taught this to our grandkids at grandpa's camp by giving all of the grandchildren little jars with caterpillars in them. And they watched in awe as the caterpillars made their cocoon, their chrysalis. A couple of weeks later, they're watching uh, it begin to emerge in the measure of its full creation as a monarch butterfly. And I warned them, what will they be tempted to do when they see it struggling mm. to help it out? If they do, what happens to the butterfly? It dies. Grandma and Grandpa, Mom and Dad, we don't want you to die. So when you're struggling, deem it a privilege that God is trusting you enough to give you this challenge. And don't be a clam on the bottom of the ocean just waiting around for plankton to float to you. America was built on an eagle on a flagpole, okay? That's right. I want you to respond with all your ability instead of taking the victim role. I want to give you equal opportunities and you come up with as much as you, you respond with all your ability, which is what, what the word responsibility means. 
And then grandma and grandpa will be there to make up the difference because I've always learned if you will be responsible and accountable and do everything you can, God will make up the difference. And that's equal opportunities for everyone instead of just, okay, I'll bail you out. And that's the equal distribution method. I'd rather leave behind in my family how to fish than just dumping a bunch of fish in their lap because then they'll be fed for a lifetime. Other than that, I don't have any strong feelings on this subject, okay? <laughs> so Doug finishes off a strong idea with a punchline, period, at the end.